if you are in your job now and you can't leave your job or you you can't feasibly go down to part-time because of your lifestyle, then you need to adjust your lifestyle, assuming that uh, becoming a physician is what you want and you're willing to sacrifice to do it. Mohammed, welcome to Ask Dr. Gray Pre-Med Q&A. How are you doing today? I am uh, doing very well, Dr. Gray. How are you? Thank you for having me. Um, great. Thank you. Why don't you uh, fill me in? Let me know how I can help you today. Um, so just to uh, summarize really quickly, I am a uh, non-traditional uh, pre-med. Okay. Uh, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in uh, mass media. Uh, so I don't have many uh, sciences at all. So I'm I'm going in, uh, I'm going into uh, the first year of pre med currently, hoping to do it in two years okay. and uh, apply to medical school. Uh, hopefully, at, uh, on the cycle of 2021, okay. um, after I take my MCAT that May. Okay. Um, so I'm just obviously I'm starting uh, starting this fall. I have a lot of questions. I've done as much research as possible. Uh, I've been listening to your um, like your podcasts, both old pre-meds and uh, the pre-med years, and it's been very helpful, but obviously I do still have some questions uh, okay. that I'd like to ask. Yeah, let's go. Um, so currently I am a full-time uh, TV producer. Nice. Um, and it's not, it, I, can, I can stay working full-time while uh, being a full-time student, I plan to be a full-time student. Obviously, that's the priority. Okay. Um, however, it would it would be uh, a little bit of uh, of, uh, of uh, a stressful situation having to obviously work full-time and and go to school full-time. It's feasible in terms of you know the time. Like I can actually allocate the time to study and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just worried about the the uh, accumulated stress and and burning out. And then on the other side of things, um, I'm looking to do, you know, maybe work part time. That would give me a lot of time for extracurriculars, obviously volunteering, uh, maybe maybe even trying to uh, have that part time job be within the medical field, yeah. uh, be a scribe, something like that. Um, and and that that has its pros and that's obvious. But is the financials like I, I don't know if the financial stress yeah. um uh, will 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 take a toll on me in terms of not being able to take enough classes or not being able to keep up with with my um, with my uh, expenses really. Yeah, and, and that's the biggest question: is what do those expenses look like? Right? Are you driving a car that has a lease? Can you can you get rid of it? Buy a junker and drive around in a junker that you don't have to make monthly payments on? Can you uh, get out of your your lease for your apartment uh, or rent for your house and go move back in with your parents uh, or get ten roommates and and significantly reduce the cost of of your living expenses? So, for me. Those are the, the types of things that I think about. If you are in your job now and you can't leave your job or you, you can't feasibly go down to part-time because of your lifestyle, then you need to adjust your lifestyle, assuming that uh, becoming a physician is what you want and you're willing to sacrifice to do it. So so for me, that's the biggest question. How how much flexibility do you have on the, the car you're driving, how much you eat out, and uh, where you're living to, to significantly reduce your costs? Right. Well, I, 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 um, that's very reassuring because that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually trying to get a piece of junk car, uh, get rid of my car. I am moving to a place that's much cheaper so I can afford to pay tuition and uh, and everything, all the other expenses that come with trying to, uh, you know, be involved in the school's community and extracurriculars and things like that. Yep. Um, so I just wanted to get kind of, you know, your opinion on that. And that helps a lot. So uh, my second question is obviously with uh, the, you know, the new technological age that we're in, uh, it opens up a lot of different avenues for different types of jobs. And that one of that being a telescribe or a virtual scribe. Yep. Um, and that's something that I was looking at. I got a job offer in that I was obviously uh, applying, um, uh, you know, for scribe jobs in general. And Scribe America offers a virtual scribe telescribe position. I wanted to know, in your opinion, um, is that really like, is it, would it be looked at 
as clinical experience. I mean, I am virtually there, but I feel like you don't really get the experience as the yeah. same as being physically there. Yeah. What What's the difference between being a telescribe and watching Grey's Anatomy and taking notes? <laughs> yeah. I read that on on a, on a forum. I think it was uh, uh, the student uh, student doctor network. Yeah. Uh, doctor yeah. That 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 um, makes so, me sad that somebody else wrote that because that's. I mean, I just came up with that on the fly. Darn it. Um, uh, yeah. So so in my good. mind, uh, in my mind, it's it's not clinical experience. Um, it's it's good experience to learn the language and 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 see what's going on and try to understand but because you're not there i i don't i don't see it as valid clinical experience okay makes sense i i, I also made the right decision in in in, uh, in wanting to uh, to kind of deny that offer yeah um okay and so that answers those two questions i have a couple of more questions okay um my my pre med advisor um, suggested that I not I do not take summer classes um, okay. uh, and rather focus on extracurriculars. Um, maybe be involved in different summer programs. He said that he will, um, you know, uh, connect me with things like that. Okay. However, I, I'd like to kind of take um, uh, take all of the semesters I have available in in order to. Uh, maximize the uh, like the efficiency and minimize the amount of time that I take because it's going to cost me the more the, the more time I, I'm sending, I'm doing a DIY post back yep. so the more time um, I spend doing it it's going to cost me more yeah um, is it is it good to spend the summer focusing on 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 extracurriculars or is it really not that important as long as I'm consistently doing something you know once a week or or once every two weeks yeah so i'm not a fan of the don't take classes during the summer philosophy uh, i think it comes from the thought that medical schools are going to go oh that's a summer ochem class that's not as good as a fall or or spring ochem class and they'll, they're going to mark you off i mean are there some schools that get that nitty-gritty maybe but the majority of schools out there just care that you do well in your classes. Um, and okay. as far as like taking the summer off from classes and like cramming all of your extracurriculars into the summer uh, to make room for your scholastic stuff during fall and, and spring, I, I don't think necessarily looks good on an application either because then it's just like you have this like patchwork extracurriculars and you're not focusing on those the rest of the time so i'm a huge advocate of mm -hmm. of consistency whether it's uh and uh, consistency over time with extracurriculars i think too many students think that oh shadowing means that i have to do 20 hours a week no shadowing means you do five hours a month over the course of two years and that's a lot of hours so um so that compound effect really, really helps with the extracurriculars. The, the okay. potential other thing to think about with summer classes, obviously, is it's such a condensed amount of time. And so a lot of students struggle with the increased uh, amount of testing, the increased amount of knowledge that you have to learn in a shorter amount of time. And so if you feel like you're going to be a student who is going to struggle in that type of environment, then great, stay away from summer classes. But outside of that, don't stay away from summer classes just because that's when you should be doing all of your extracurriculars or don't stay away from summer classes just because you think that, that medical schools aren't going to, to like summer classes more than than any other class okay um and and my last question then uh would is regarding research mm -hmm. um obviously uh, it's it's a great idea to to research into something that i, I would be personally interested in and actually curious to learn about um uh, now my question is is psychology or or sociology um a research that's respected or kind of um, not looked down upon um, in, in the applications because that's something that I love um, and I would you know be ecstatic if I'm doing research in something like this yeah do it doesn't doesn't have to be research about medicine specifically obviously psychology is a big part of medicine uh, um, so I, I go for it if you enjoy it if you if you know you'll enjoy it the, the, the question potentially would be, hey, like, Mohammed, why are you doing all this psychology research? Why, why don't you become a psychologist? Right. So just right. potentially be prepared for that question. But 
uh, if if that's an easy answer for you, great, mm-hmm. move forward with it. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much. You answered, you know, the the couple of questions I had, and I really appreciate that. It was straightforward and to the point. And, Good, and it helps a lot. Awesome. I appreciate it, Doctor Ray, and uh, thank you for you know for doing all of the uh, the podcasts that you do, and uh, and you know just facilitating the whole. The whole um, medical school HQ, I I love it. It's very helpful. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you in uh, January 21, um, you know, when when I need your services. Nice. Uh, Glad I could help, Mohammed. All right. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.